Madam President, I was in college. I remember watching a State of the Union speech from President Reagan where he took a 43-pound stack of papers and set them on the podium as he was giving a State of the Union address and said, this is the budget bill that has been given to me. 43 pounds of it all stacked up. And it was a famous moment when the president said, do not send this to me again. Republicans and Democrats alike stood and cheered and said that's a terrible way to do government. And for five of the next six years, there were more, no more omnibus appropriation bills. But that did not last. Since 1998, there have been, I'm sorry, since 1986, there have been 22 omnibus appropriation bills. Now, people may ask, what is that? Well, by law, Congress is to do 12 appropriation bills. Each part of that has a section of the budget. And you pass each one of those standalone. They go through committees, they go through first subcommittee, then committee, then to the full floor, and then they pass. But seven, uh, 17 times since 1998 and 22 times since 1986, all of those bills were just looped together to make one giant document, the 43-pound document that President Reagan dropped in 1988. What's going wrong? Because we have another one of those omnibus bills next week, where all of the appropriation bills were all looped together to try to simplify the process, but to actually provide even less transparency. What do we do in this, and how did we get here? Well, the short story of it is there's a Budget Control Act of 1974, which was created right after Watergate in a fight between Congress and President Nixon over the fact that President Nixon was told by Congress to be able to spend certain amounts of money in certain areas, and President Nixon basically didn't want to spend it, and so Congress pushed back and put additional requirements on him to actually do what Congress was compelling them to do. From that 1974 Budget Act to try to create more transparency and to provide greater leadership for Congress, out of that was born this Budget Act, but was also born the House and Senate Budget Committees and also the Congressional Budget Office. All those things were to create more input and to create a system where each year the President would create a budget and would submit that budget to Congress and then that budget would lead to authorizing bills from the different committees. And then from the authorizing, it would lead to appropriation bills and final passage. Well, how's that working for us? It's not. It created a process so complicated and so slow, though it makes sense on paper in legislative language, it doesn't actually work year to year and it pushes us into what's called continuing resolutions, or as commonly thrown around here, CRs. Every year since 1995, Congress has had at least one CR, one continuing resolution, that is taking last year's appropriation bills, just changing the date on it and moving it over. No strategic planning, nothing. That's a problem for us. The budget process itself has broken down and has fallen into omnibus spending bills with 12 bills all combined. We failed to be able to get budget bills done some years at all. The authorizing process that's supposed to go between the budget and the appropriations process has completely collapsed for us. In fact, in the 2017 appropriations that happens, there were 256 expired authorizations in the final appropriation bills. About $310 billion of what was appropriated was not authorized even last year. Some of those things hadn't been authorized for more than a decade. Finally, we've only passed all appropriation bills four times in the last 44 years. We have a major problem with the way we do budgeting. And year after year, people visit me or people bring up to me in town hall meetings, or just time at the grocery store or at Taco Bell, people will catch me and say, what is going on with the budget process? I can say, it sounds like, if it sounds like you say that every year, it's because you've said that every year now for a couple of decades. 
how do we get out of this? Well, there was a bipartisan, bicameral committee that was put together. They had met for the first time last week. There are 16 total of us, eight Democrats, eight Republicans, eight from the Senate, eight from the House. And our mission is to be able to revise the way we do budgeting. Now, probably a lot of Americans won't watch this process. But it will be extremely important that we actually fix it. I am convinced we're not going to get a better budget product until we get a better budget process. Now, this committee itself is designed in such a way to be able to take out the partisanship, not just from equal numbers on both sides, but the agreement is from the very beginning, if we don't have a majority of Democrats and a majority of Republicans sign off on the final proposal, we won't bring it to the floor. But if we do, we hope to be able to fix the budget process itself. The budget process is set up to create gimmicks in the budgeting rather than to fix them. We have a 10-year budget window, and there's all these gimmicks that have been created to try to move spending outside the 10-year budget window to make things look like they're actually going to balance when they actually don't balance. I'd like for us to consider some things like biennial budgeting. 20 states budget every two years. It gives budget certainty for 24 months. We should get that. That helps our economy. That helps our businesses. That helps our agencies. That helps in contracting. That helps us avoid these continuing resolutions if we can actually do budgeting in two-year cycles. I'd like us to get out of the perpetual focus on government shutdowns in the countdown clocks that happen. I proposed a bill five years ago called the Government Shutdown Prevention Act to be able to get us to a spot where we actually put the pressure on Congress to be able to get the job done, but hold agencies and hold the American people harmless while we work through the process. I think, quite frankly, the President's budget is a meaningless document. It's never been passed by any president of any party. I don't mind the president releasing their budget priorities, ways that we can save money, duplication that they see, key aspects. That's entirely appropriate. But the president's budget every year just becomes a big fight. And when it's late, it throws the process off even more and gives Congress one more reason to say they're not getting their job done because someone else was late in theirs. We should be able to reform that. We should be able to reform the way that we do debt limits. We're the only country in the world that does this. We've had some kind of debt limit since the 1920s, actually. But originally, when it went into the, the form that it's in now in the late 1930s, it was established as a way to be able to protect us from adding more debt, and it did work for decades. It has not for decades. It's just been another fiscal cliff out there that's not actually resolved anything. We've got to either fix that so it actually does what it's accomplished to do or take it away but we can't destabilize international economies because we can't get our job done here. We've got to be able to have some sort of focus on both revenue and spending. We should deal with real consequences when we don't get things done on time here. We've got to build internal processes here that actually get things done. And we've got to pay attention to $20 trillion in growing in national debt. These are things that we can get done, but they won't get done if we don't actually fix the process because there's no moment to actually get the big things and the hard things done. My hope and my commitment is with this body and with this group of 16 of us that have grouped together from the House and the Senate, Republicans and Democrats, is to bring a proposal to us that's a fair, nonpartisan proposal that's not focused on what party is in power at that moment, but looks at the fiscal health of the nation how we can plan for the future, and how we can actually get off of this endless cycle of non-action and get back to a process of predictable budget and appropriations. We'll bring some of those solutions in the days ahead. Right now we're meeting and talking. I invite any member of this body that wants to be able to contribute to that to catch any one of us in this group. We're not saying that the 16 of us are exclusive to solving it. I also say the same thing to the American people. Anyone in my state or anyone around the country that wants to contribute good ideas to it, bring it. Let's add these good ideas together. Let's fix the process. Let's get back to actually talking about how we solve the budget issues rather than how we solve our internal processes in the House and the Senate. That's the last thing that we should be arguing about and the first thing that we should fix. With that, I yield back.